you, if you need a friend this morning, there is a friend in Jesus. If you need a healer this morning, there is a healer in Jesus. If you need a confidant, there is a confidant in Jesus. Whatever you need, it's in Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you this morning uh, at the book of Matthew chapter 14. Uh, and, and we want to go to the Holy Spirit because... Um, there, there's something in Matthew chapter 14 that I think that will help all of us. It impacted my life when I really got an understanding of uh, what Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 14. And, 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 and I want you to see this, and then I want to show you a video, very short, and then, and then I want to preach the sermon. But have you ever you looked at Matthew chapter 14, verse 22? You know, after Jesus had fed 5,000 folks, okay. uh -huh. blessed him, they had ate and gotten full. You know, people get full, they're ready to go to sleep. Uh, ate and got full. Uh, full of some fish, too. You know how we like fish. I don't know if it was catfish or it was fish. Uh, but none of them really still believed he was the Messiah. And there's some things that transpired. Number one, Jesus, uh, after you've done good, have you ever done good for somebody before? Yeah. And you, you've demonstrated who you are to them, and, and they show no appreciation yeah. or gratitude. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Jesus finds himself having to steal away for a moment, just get away to himself. And, and he wants to be by himself. He even tells his disciples, you, you go on, you go on too. You go on by yourself too, because you demonstrated faith that didn't believe that I'm the son of God. People believing in Christ meant something to him. The shortest scripture in the Bible is uh, John 11, verse number 35, when Christ wept, Jesus wept. He wept because folk didn't believe he was the Son of God. And, and here he is now, having demonstrated his majestic power, and all people wanted was a blessing. Y'all know folk like that? That's all they want is a blessing. They, 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 they're so busy eating, they forget that, that they didn't have nothing in the first place. And yet he made something out of nothing. Have God made something out of nothing in your life once or twice in your life? And, and so because all it, all it seems to be is about the material things in life and bellies are full, he needs some time to go and talk to the Father. Some, someone says, you know, that I can tell him all my cares and, and gently leave them there. He still hears. He dries my tears. Jesus gives me hope. And so he had his time where he needed to pray. He needed to be by himself, but he also took it as an educational moment. He looks at his disciples and he says, I want you to go and I want you here just for a moment because if you don't get this lesson, it's going to mess with your whole life. It's been messing with your whole life because some of you are in this text right now. And I'm only talking to those who are listening to me that realize that I'm in this text. And when you see yourself in this text, I want you, if you, if you, if you see yourself, I want you to raise your hands and say, boy, I'm in this text right now because Jesus does some teaching uh, in the midst of his disappointment. He said, I want you to go into a storm. Now, now listen. I want Jesus purposely sends us, them, into a storm. Have you ever been in a storm? It was not by accident that you went into the storm. You went into the storm because Jesus sent you into the storm because he, he wants you to learn something from stormy weather. Let that resonate just for me. I'm going through something right now. It's not by accident. Everything seems like it's up. It's not by accident. God knows what he's doing. Things are hurting me right now. It's not by accident. The Bible says straightway he did what? Send the multitudes away. Next verse. Watch this. And then he says what? He told his disciples, get into the ship, go before the other side. And when they went into the multitude, the multitude went into the mountain, the port to pray, and the evening will come, he was alone. Verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of what? The sea. In the sea. Does Jesus know that a storm is brewing? He sent them into inclement weather. He sent them into a place 
Now the thing to remember that when God sends you into a storm, it's not no play water, it's not no spring, it's not no California rain. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's not no we'll just, you know, just a little bit of rain, I'll start wrecking cars and, 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 and just showing out like you poor Korean and stuff. And like, hey, God, I'm, 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 I'm talking about when, when, when he sends you into a storm, it's a perfect storm. Because God designs a storm just for you individually. Amen. Because I don't get what David get from his storms. And David don't get what I get from my storms. Nor the son get from she gets from Dr. Well. We all have our own storm designed by God. And God sends us into a storm which is called a perfect storm. It's a storm in which, now watch, this is the dangerous part about this. It's a storm in which if you don't learn, if you don't get the lesson, you get to go back through the storm all over again. <laughs> Some of you are constantly going through storms because you're not learning from bad weather. And you, you're not learning from the stuff you've been through. And until you learn from the stuff you're going through, God continues to let you go through storms over and over again. And you can, you've been wondering all your life, you've been since you were 15, why you're going through the same stuff over and over again is because you're not learning from your storm. There's something in your spirit that God is trying to show you that you need to adjust and correct or the storms are going to keep on coming. How many want the storms to stop in your life? Say amen. I want the storms to stop because, because that's it. And, and it's necessary because can't, and here's the hard thing about this. This is this why I have the text. Jesus goes to the mountain because if, if any parents in here, can y'all say amen? amen. Be, because, because, because it's hard for me to let go of my children and know they're about to go in some bad weather. And if I go with you, I'm tempted to fix it for you. So I, I'm going to say back. I'm going to let go. And, and she, that little girl, or that little boy, will have to learn some lessons for themselves. And so I'm going to go up here and pray. Because my child getting ready to go into, I'm going to show you this in text. My child is getting ready to go through some stuff. God sees you in your problem right now. And, and, and God knows what he's doing. And it's painful for a parent. When you're a parent to watch your child do some of the stuff that they do, it tears you up inside. But it's necessary for the child to learn and to go through what they're going through. So they can learn that mama and daddy sometimes knows what's best. I like to say amen. Let's look at this song very quick. And I want to show you this song, this perfect song. Uh, and, and then we'll, we'll get into the lesson and, 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 and maybe these points to make sense to you. Yeah. Wait on the side. Yeah. You see, the boat is not in just play water, but he's in some real water. Those are 50 foot, 60 foot waves, swells that are moving. And what the people in the boat are going to have to learn the hard way, which is like some of us, is that you can't guide your way through everything. With all your technical skills and all your, 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 your ability to do this, that you can't fix everything by yourself. And if we had sound, you'll, you'll find them struggling because when we're in storms, we find ourselves trying to go through what has always brought us through and we're trying to drive our own ship. And then they finally come to the realization that we're not going to get out of this one. We're not going to make it out of this one. My marriage is going to end in divorce. My friendship is over. Uh, this, this, we, this, is not, this is not going to turn out good. And finally, uh, in a last ditch effort, they approach the last wall of the storm. Like he says, we're not going to get out of this one. And he just gets it full blast and try to run up the storm. But sisters and brothers, I'm stopped by to tell you that when God fixes a storm, you're not going to get out of this one. You're not going to that, that, that you're going to come into a place if you don't learn to let go and let go. That the songs of life will take over. As we watch uh, in the final uh, summation, he is angry and he is fussing. He is flooring the ship just like we do, trying to get through, trying to get over, trying to get on. He says, go, go, go. But the storm is just too much. And you know what, church? By now, the storm 
is either drowning and covering you to where you're losing your mind, to where, you, to where you're covered in so much hurt and pain, there's absolutely no way out. And the question that comes to mind is, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Well, I'm going to show you where Jesus is. When you're going through a storm, there's some things to remember. Number one, you, you've got to remember that the only thing that's going to carry you through the storm is the love that you have for Christ. Because the storm will reveal your true feelings about God. Amen. And when you're really going through something with God, then our mission statement really reigns supreme. Because our mission statement says, I, I first must have an intimate, my most important relationship is, that have an intimate relationship, not with, with everybody else, but with God. That's the most important way that I really truly love God because the weather is about to get bad in your life. There's about to be some financial hurricanes in your life. There's about to be some folk that hurt you or that are close to you. There's your children about to let you down. Your co-workers are about to misuse you. Life is about to get real rough. And if you don't love God, you're not going to make it through. Amen. If you don't love God, you're going to turn to everything else but God. And so once I love God, then I know how to love other folk who are going through their own story as well. And once I love God and love myself and love other folk, I'm ready to face what God held before me. And the question that comes to mind is, where is God in all my storms of life? Where is God at when I'm going through the hell when I'm going through? Where is God? Well, God is never but just a prayer away, somebody ought to say. I'm glad, God. And you can try to run from your storm all you want to, but God is looking at you and every one of you that's sitting here right now as tough as you are, better get ready because you're going to face your storm whether you want to or not. You better leave with God on your mind. Jonah chapter 1, about verse 3, you'll find that Jonah paid money to try to get away from his storm. God told him to go down to Nevada and preach to that city, and Jonah said, I'm not going out of it. I'm for crazy. And God prepared a storm for Jonah. I want you to know that God is preparing a storm for you because you're too hard-headed like Jonah that God has said, I'm going to fix a storm for Brother for brother Robinson. The Brother Robinson got some pride stuff going on. I got a special storm for him, and I got a storm for Brother Hamilton because he got something going on, but he has a storm for everybody. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. God will fix a storm that's ready for you and only you, and the only thing you can do is say, Lord, you're going to have to help me through my storm. Where is God in my storm? Yeah, yeah look at Moses. Moses, he tried to deny his storm. Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11 through 14, when God said, I got a storm of people for you to leave, he said, but Lord, I, I, how can I do this? I, I stutter. I'm not ready for this storm. It does not matter if you're ready for your storm. You're about to get your heart broke, and what matters is what you want your relationship with God. Or are you listening to me right now? God is, a, is about to send somebody in here into a storm because you've got some mess going on in your head that you need to realize that God is God all by himself. Sin. That's why God fixed the storm. Go, 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 go get in the boat. Go get in the boat. Go to your neighbor and say, he told me to get in the boat. Y'all don't want to get in the boat. You're going to get in the boat. You're going to get in the boat. You don't want to get in the boat, but you're going to get in the boat. Because, because listen, the, the, the only way that, that I find out I'm not as powerful as I think I am is I've been through some stuff that's taught me I'm not as tough as I think I am. His hypocrisy, Acts chapter 10, by verse number 10. Peter is hypocrisy. When God approached him, God, God had to fix a song for him. And when God approached him in the text, in Matthew chapter 14, in the text, when Peter saw, saw Jesus walking on the water, they thought it was a ghost. He said, Master, did you allow me? to step out on the storm. Now you saw the storm in the video. Allow me to step out on the storm. And so God said, okay, I, I got this storm fixed just for Peter. Because I know Peter is so hot-headed and so arrogant he think he can walk on water. I'm going to let him walk on water as long as his head is right. You're not listening to me right now. That storm was prepared for Peter. Peter gets out the boat and starts walking toward Christ. But he took his eye off Jesus. And when he took his eye off Jesus, he began to sink down in the water. He had to come to the realization, as bad as I am with a knife, I can't do it by myself. And he cried, Master, save me. Save me. Job, Job and his son lost his children, lost his wife, lost his business, 
lost his property, lost his reputation, lost his integrity, never lost his integrity, but lost everything materialistic and everything close to him than in the physical manifestation that a man lost his health and his strength. And the question that he had, Lord, why have you done me like this? He even declared in the book of Job chapter 23, oh, that I knew I might find Christ, that I might find God. I will fill my mouth with arguments against him. I know I've been doing right. I know I ain't did what these people said. Yet you allowed this storm to come into my life. I'm confused. I'm conflicted. I want to argue with God. Have you ever wanted to argue with God? Some folk don't understand. You don't understand. God has a storm that will bring you off your high horse, straighten out your face, straighten out your attitude, and make you sit and say, Lord, why? What did I do? What happened? I need some clarification. So I sometimes I look at folk and I say, you know what you're doing with your old snubby self? <laughs> you just getting a storm prepared. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I see folk and I see them acting crazy. I see them just rolling their eyes, looking fine. I say, oh, you, you, you make a you do some songs. You do some song. And you create your own what? Storm. Your own song. Y'all you know, get there. The songs are produced by God because God is sex and change. God is set to go from you playing like you God. And you understand that he's God by himself. God wants to experience your faith. Why are you going through what you're going through? Somebody, somebody said, well, I've been through a whole lot of stuff. You keep going through a whole lot of stuff because you're not giving. God has to send you back through the water again. You're not listening to me right now. God knows you're going through some stuff. Look at Luke 22 and verse number 32. The Bible says that Jesus said to Peter, you know why you're on your third marriage? Because you ain't learned how to be a godly woman with your first husband. Somebody had to say, hey, man, that's why, that's why you want to. Until you learn to quiet your spirit and quit running your, acting like you're going to tear the house up and you're going to shoot Jesus if you come up in here. Until you get your attitude together and quit talking all the time and running your mouth like the Bible don't mean nothing. Until y'all so get quiet, but you, you on your third one because God had to fix another song for you. He won't say no, God, he's not going to see you a good man. See you a song to deal with, so you appreciate it. Uh, somebody I say, hey, man, I, if I was God, I wouldn't see you a good man either. I send you somebody that help you learn how to appreciate. Mm, Y'all still this, Bro, brothers? You know, you know why you on your third? That this is the third woman taking your paycheck. All the stuff you got. You know why? Because you don't know how to treat a good woman. You don't tiptoe and phone number getting. Oh, try to think you slick coming. You you can beat this woman. You, you meet her because you don't know how to act when you when you get a good one. She cook it for you. She making more money than you making it. Sharing it with you. She got good credit. You had bad credit since you was eight. You can't count to fifteen. You walk around here while her old big old mash your feet won't cut your cubicles. And you start to see you a good woman for what? Send you somebody that you know how to appreciate. Somebody say amen. I, I, I gotta see you. I gotta send you somebody that's as tough as you are. You hear the sign say, well, Brother, you show you show a tough preacher. You a tough church. God had to put us together. <laughs> Sing 
wants to sift you like wheat. I'm not going to stop it. Bubba, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. I ain't going to stop it. You're about to go through something that's going to rip you in the threads, tear you apart. And I can't stop it because it's what you need in order to help you get to the other side. But what I will do is I'm going to pray for you. Now, if anybody else said I'm going to pray for you, I would have got offended. But when Jesus says, y'all didn't get to that. When Jesus said he's going to pray for you. I know everything is going to be all right. Y'all not listening to me right now. You know, if they didn't say it, I'm going to pray for you. I'm like, what you mean you're going to pray for me? You need to help me. But come pray for me. And if someone said, I'm going to pray for you, I said, you trying to be funny. I, 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 I lost my car. And I said, someone, can I use your truck to get the word? She said, baby, honey, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm like, oh, I need to ride to work. I need to ride to work. Just for a moment, you think of just for a moment. Every one of you are going through something right now. And I'm telling you, you can get mad at me if you want to. God, God sent you into it for a purpose. You're going through it for a reason. Folk don't like you for a reason. You you get no folk nerve for everywhere you go, you get the same thing over and over. Matter of fact, some of you, when I talk to you, before I can try to even tell you of what, what God has put in me to tell you, you already tell me, I know, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of just tell me to shut up and keep on talking anyway, because there's something wrong with you. And God said, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm gonna just be quiet and let it go through it. Let it go through it. Because they they they, they need this. You 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 trying to interrupt my work. Just I'm praying for you. He said, now this is what he said. He said, now listen. Here's the good part. I'm praying for you. And you're going to get through it. You're going through something real painful right now. God says you're going to get through it. You're not listening to me. You're going through hell right now. He says when you get through it, I want you to do what? Help your brother. Does it make you feel good to know that you're going to make it through it? You're going to be converted. Why did I say we can be sent us to the storm? He sends us to the storm because God is trying to construct change in your life. Some of us make it through storms faster than others. Some of us have to keep going through storms. You might buy you some rain boots and a jacket because you still ain't learned how to give God glory. You sit there right now and you write your own check. You got it all together. All you're doing is making a storm. Everything in here is not giving God glory and praise. You better get your umbrella out because it's going to rain this week. Somebody got to say amen. If you ain't saying thank you, Jesus, glory, hallelujah, you might as well get ready. If you're still in here tied up in the menagerie of what this person's doing, and I don't like that person, God said, I got to fix a storm for her, because when you come in the house of God, you need to be in the house of God ready to give me praise and glory, because I deserve praise and glory for the least of things I've done for you. Amen. Every fish you ate came from God. Somebody say amen. amen. This is bigger than this. this is, but I'm understanding Every day of my life, I'm creating my own songs. And the bigger the problem, the bigger the challenges inside of me. God demands change. He, he, he allows songs. You go through what you go through because God is trying to show you that you need to make some changes in your life that bring you to the reality that he's God all by himself. Yes. Uh, when you get through it, I want you to, want you to convert your brother. Y'all understand this so far? Yes. All right, so now this, this is what I learned not to do. When I'm going through my storm, I learn not to talk bad about the stuff I'm going through. Amen. Why did I learn not to talk bad about the stuff I'm going through? Because God brought me to it. Amen. Oh, man. Y'all miss it. When you start talking bad about your storm, you talking bad about who created it. Amen. I remember the first time. Uh, a woman took my money. Mm. Amen. It was, it was, it was, I was offended. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, but you know, I learned to appreciate her because it helped me to appreciate the woman who don't take my money. Amen. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's a woman that don't take some money. Amen. 
at least I'm married this time, baby. Uh, uh, now this, this, this is what I'm getting ready. Every no good joker you met that broke your heart, Amen. when you speak bad about him, you speak bad about the providential will of God. Amen. Because God sent him to you to teach you about you. Amen. You, you, you hard to live with. So he had to send somebody with your old funny ways. Hanging up frog legs on walls and stuff. Don't want three lights on at the same time. What difference do it make? Oh, my God. 